Hello everyone, it's Vince Gamer here, and I'm going to be talking a lot about some sneaky little M5 profiles that seem to have dropped. I want to give a big shout out to uh, Dice Gods Wargaming, who have shared this to Infinity Global Community, which means that you've probably seen it. But if you haven't, there's some quite cool stuff in here that I wanted to share with you and talk a little bit about some speculation or things that might be known pieced together from other previous pieces of information that we've received. So starting off with the JSI, JSA Shinden Butai uh, profiles that are here, we can see, you now again, like not comparing these apples for apples because you can look at what's out there for M4 at the moment, but if any of these do exist already, things are going to be changing quite significantly for M5. So I'm not necessarily going to see this as like a comparison between the existing units and the new. What I do want to focus on is what we can infer that is you know, brand new for M5 or is quite cool. And looking at the stat lines across the top, we can see a lot of things that we knew already. So vitality has changed, or wounds have changed to vitality, but that's been talked about quite extensively. So nothing majorly changing in that top row. Special skills, the format's still exactly the same, which is really cool. Uh, we don't see anything in the top two profiles, the Senku troops that I think really stand out as being exceptional. Then we've got Senku troop, uh, which is the other line trooper. That doesn't have anything Major, obviously, we're seeing different loadouts there. We're seeing a combi rifle with flash pulse, uh, pistol, and CC weapon. Then we're seeing just some combi rifle and pistol CC weapons. All of them have courage. Then got the combi rifle one has forward reserve, but the other two don't. Jizamurai Hanri Odan. That's an interesting one. So we see dodge plus three, dodge plus two inch. So we're seeing a lot of what we would expect JSA to be good at, which is getting into trouble and then dodging the way out of it. Mimetism, climbing plus. Combat instinct is brand new. Don't know what that means yet. And there would be lots of speculation about what it could mean. And that's all it would be, is just speculation at this point. We haven't seen anything that tells us what that is. Be interesting to see. I was going to say it could, I wonder if it's something like martial arts. But then we see martial arts level four on the Hatamoto and we see martial arts level three on the Jizamurai. Don't know what combat instinct is. This is going to be interesting. That's going to be a new rule that everyone potentially has to learn. Then we've got Light Shotgun Thunderbolt, which is a new weapon. We're going to talk about weapons slightly lower down. And then the PS equals 5. That's what we're seeing in terms of the new damage mechanic, which I've already done a video on explaining that, uh, which you can watch if you click the link above. Uh, then we go down to the Radiant. We've still got Mimetism. We've still got x visors so We've got quite a few things that we're familiar with. Hidden Deployment, Mine Layer, Missile Launcher, Shock Mines, Break Pistol. So nothing brand new there that seems crazy. And then Hatamoto with the Lieutenant plus one order. We still see a lot of familiar things like Frenzy. Nano screen doesn't go anywhere. Natural Born Warrior, obviously we know that's changing for N5. Well, in N4, Natural Born Warrior cancelled everything to do with martial arts. We now know it's only going to be cancelling part of it, which off the top of my head I think is the negative modifiers to the attackee. So the person who has Natural Born Warrior won't get the negative impacts is I think what it is off the top of my head. And then we see combat instinct again there and then no cover. Ooh, I th think now my speculation for this is that it's like impetuous, how impetuous works. I'm wondering if it be the case of, you know, impetuous has a nested rule where any unit that has impetuous doesn't get cover at the same time. I'm wondering if that's what this means, is it basically just means that this can't ever get cover, but we don't, don't for sure, my speculation. And then we've got Nakizaru, which we've got the killer hacker device. Nice to see that that's not going anywhere. MSV1, martial arts, whole bunch of forward deployment, Kami plus terrain, mimetism, some machine gun decharges, silenced pistol. That's new? What? I thought silenced was relatively new, but silenced pistol doesn't seem to be. And then shock CC weapon, PS6. So again, that basically means that in order to survive it, you will have to roll a six or less. So following all the other mechanics. It's actually the weapons chart that has got a lot of people talking. And there's a few things in here that I want to jump straight to. One is the first, it's a new column that we're seeing there, which is the SN, which is the save number. So the number of saves that you have to make uh, if you're hit with that weapon. It doesn't look like it's anything too crazy. What it's doing is giving unnesting like DA it seems to be because when you actually scroll down you see a weapon that has AP plus DA that's burst two and then things like explosive that was always three saves but that's nested in the explosive rule so this is actually just bringing those nested rules further forward so that you can kind of look down and just go oh explosive I've got to make three saves like it's uh, DA I've got to make two saves I, I like it 
Uh, obviously, it's like ninety percent redundant because for most things, it's only one save. But I like the fact that they're making it easy for people to see. So that's the new column that we're seeing there. And then the next one is a silence pistol. Interestingly, that's disposable too. I find it really interesting that the pistol has a disposable value at all. So yeah, you basically only get two opportunities to use it in silence mode. Because I'm assuming that you basically have a silence pistol. And then I'm interested about what the minus six means. Because originally, my understanding of M4 silence was that it basically worked like stealth. But so like you could move with stealth. Typically, if you use a weapon or anything like that, that breaks stealth and alerts everything. But the fact that it now has a minus six mod, is that going to be like, say, the BS minus three that the Silver Star Prime has in Torchlight? Is it, you know, does that mean that, but then that only works if that's a face to face. So this probably isn't like that BS minus three. It's maybe you get minus six on whatever you're doing with the silence weapon. So if you've got line of fire, does that mean you could be shooting at me, but it's going to be minus six? You could dodge, but it's going to be minus six. Does it mean if you're being, you don't know, like, I think it's fairly straightforward. It's going to be straightforward when it comes out. But I'm like, that would actually be quite cool if you're giving like a straight up minus six mod just by using the silence pistol, like regardless of what it is. Could be quite cool. The range band's there. Obviously, you, you want to be within eight to get that plus three. But if your opponent is potentially on a minus six, you'd probably risk getting that 12 inch mark, 13 inch mark, where yeah, you've got zeros. But if your opponent's trying to shoot back on minus six, then it's probably might mean that the dice are in your favor. So that's one of the cool ones that we've seen there. It's also disposable in CC mode. So you can only hit someone twice with it. But then it's still silenced in CC mode. Again, interesting to see how that actually fleshes out. The silence rule will explain things a lot more. Break pistol seems to work very similarly to how it does at the moment. Light shotgun hit mode. The new thing with the shotguns is that they've got a terminal template circular. So that seems to be a big change from N4 where shotguns use a teardrop template. This is a big change then if it's changing from a teardrop. So teardrop was fairly easy to manage effectively just placed it where at the tip of the weapon and then pointed it at the target and then everything that fell under it was being shot so I'm gluing a model at the same time. But the it's going to be interesting to see how this circular template works because how will you place it? I've seen some of the older veteran players talk about that it's maybe like similar to a return to how shotguns used to work or something like that, which I seem to remember because I played a little bit of N3 before M4 came out, is that your target, you place a circular template on the target and then things that were impacted by that kind of got hit as well. But then that was based on distances and stuff like that. It seemed complicated. And then the teardrop was simpler, but I may be misremembering because that was several years ago, the M3. But anyway, terminal template. We don't know what a terminal template is. Um, I haven't seen that wordage in throughout M4, but it's circular. I'm interested to see what happens there. Then we've got shock mines. Mm, looks like direct template. It's cut off on the screenshot that has been shared, but could say direct template, which means that maybe we do still have teardrops. <laughs> it's all getting very complicated. Uh, nothing major. So come rifle, so we'll get suppression fire. Flash pulse. That is just one save. That is currently two. So that's decreasing so that's nerfing flash pulses a little bit which flash pulses are they're annoying when you lose a very key attack piece to thunderbolt so that was a new weapon that we'd seen ps6 ps lower numbers and more damage uh, so it's actually fairly difficult to save so damage six that's the equivalent of it being like damage 14 in current money so that's an interesting one pulsar that big teardrop i think that's an upgrade for pulsar can't remember now so teardrops aren't going anywhere. It's just shotguns are getting a different mechanic. Then D charges, anti-material disposable. Three, that's... Might be, that's... I don't think that's a change. And then we've got the same for the missile launcher. So missile launcher gets that terminal template rounds that we saw on the shotguns. Be interesting to see how that pans out now, because if that's going to be the same as a missile launcher, explosive mode, then that actually makes, might make shotguns a bit better than they currently are. So that's the JSA Shindenbu Tai ones. And then we get the Kestrel Colonial Force, the Pan Oceania. So this is all from the soundtrack box, just in case I haven't mentioned that. What do we see that's new here? Terrain Desert. Uh, yep, obviously soundtrack makes a lot of sense. So lots of desert terrain. We've got paramedic. We've got 
obviously the Fennec Fusiliers, which are, I think they'd probably be playing not too dissimilar to Fusiliers at present. Black Air, there must be two. That looks pretty good. I'm just obviously it's like scanning over stuff. It doesn't help. Combat Instincts are the same as what we've been seeing on the JSA. Number two doesn't go anywhere. So that's great for if you're running fire teams because that takes over the link team leader. If the link team leader dies immediately, mimetism, neurokinetics, sniper rifle, so that's pretty cool. Anything new that we're seeing there? No, I'll oh, jump eight inches. That's interesting because at the moment we've got super jump, which, and there's no jump eight inches, there's no fixed movement necessarily. So that's the Griffin true. So it'll be interesting to see what jump mechanic now exists. And then the scarecrows or banshees, I've skipped over them. Parachutism, I think that's probably just going to be parachutist, but maybe there has been like misspelling there. But the interesting one that comes here is super jump jet propulsion. We don't know if that's going to matter yet, like the type of super jump that you're instigating. We, obviously, it would be weird for them to add it if it's not going to have any relevance to later rules, but I wonder if that's going to be scenario specific. But it will be interesting to see what jet propulsion actually means and what the actual brackets mean. Then Pulse Air Force 1 Burst, yeah, that's then fairly straightforward. And then we've got Surprise Attack still making an impact. Camouflage in Deployment Infiltration, which is minus six. Nothing major on the Scarecrow Active Recon Group. AP Mines, save six, and then Silence Pistol. So a lot of what we had seen before. Anything new or shocking or different that catches our eyes? Not yet. Shotgun's still getting that terminal template soaked list. I'm not sure what that means. CC Weapon. I think there's a misspelling here because the traits on the CC weapon has just a 7 in it, but I don't think it should be there. I don't think we read too much into that. Flash Pulse, yep, stunning, non-lethal. Pulsar, yeah, and then we shouldn't be. Multi-Sniper gets Suppressive Fire. Don't think that has Suppressive Fire at the moment. AP but not DA on the Multi-Sniper, because at the moment you can choose AP and DA, I think. I don't know why I'm struggling to remember that. Yeah, so currently, Multi Sniper has just a DA or an AP shot version. So those are the two different versions. And um, so that's changing so that there's an AP or a shot. And then there's a third profile read on. So you've got either AP or shot or DA. I think that's good because I think the AP, and AP plus DA was hot. Maybe a bit too much. Oh, an AP shock. Yeah, it's nice that it split that out. I think that's, that's pretty good. It depends on your target very much there. And then only the, so the DA version getting anti-material. And then the other two getting suppressive fire. That's cool. Then the HMG gets suppressive fire as well. That's nifty. I am going to enjoy that. And then yet suppressive fire. That's all good. Interesting. So yeah, a bit of a read through of the new profiles. There's some cool stuff in there. There's definitely some stuff as always when you see like leaks out of context and it generally gives you more questions than answers. And also looking at something in isolation, you're also looking at that with the current way of working in mind. Like we'll look at that like an HMG and suppressive fire. So that's broken or something like that, because you're looking at which units currently have HMG. Um, the cost of HMG currently, all of those things, which are very valid things to be thinking about. But what we don't yet know is what, what's changing for M5. You know, some of those units that have HMGs might lose it. It might be more expensive to have an HMG. And I'm just using this as an example. It's not something that I think is worth worrying about. Same with shotguns. You're looking at that going terminal template. Does that mean circular template? Does that mean that link teams are then going to get splattered by them? But we also don't know what that means and whether everything that had light shotguns is going to get them still. So still a lot more out of context questions than answers at this stage, but I like where a lot of these things are, uh, are heading. And also from what I do know about what's coming that hasn't been revealed yet, there's some even more exciting things in the pipeline. So if people are losing their minds about shotguns changing, the templates, um, about some things getting specified that didn't, about some of the ammo types changing, about new keywords, uh, combat instinct coming in, and natural born warrior changing, they are going to have kittens when they see some of the big stuff that's happening. So like, thank you so much for your patience with this video and going through these new profiles with me and just exploring what's new, what's coming. I'm so excited for M5, so excited for Sandtrap, and I hope you are too. And I'll be back soon with another video.